Dr. Paul, who will be speaking today on Decision 360, Finding a Way Forward. One of the family members, not the other side. No, 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 no. My fellow tech masters, welcome guests. Decisions are hard. Making decisions are very difficult, particularly when they're poor decisions or when there's a lot on the line. Big money or a lot of angst in your personal life. As tax masters, we work on decision making skills week to week to week to get over our fear. But most people, in general, are paralyzed by indecision when it comes to making big decisions. They can't quite figure out which way to go. I do a lot of sales. The worst answer you can ever get from somebody that needs to make a decision, maybe, I guess, I know, well, we just can't quite figure out what we're going to do. <laughs> and that's the problem. I want to talk today a little bit about a scenario on how you can help people who are stuck in the decision making process. This framework applies to personal decisions because everybody, no matter who you are, will face big decisions where occasionally you will be stuck. It's also very helpful if you're a consultant. I am a consultant. And occasionally I run into clients that need to make a decision and can't quite get out of their own way to make a decision. So imagine for a moment that you, as a consultant, have a large corporate client that has a big business, very profitable. Unfortunately, they have a really crappy ancient technology stack that's 40 years old, mm. baked into the DNA of the corporation. It affects everybody from the lowliest mail clerk to the CEO. The client, the mesh. And they are trying to decide to change or not to change. That is the question that they are wrestling with. Guess what? They are stuck. They're just going, rah, rah, rah. So they brought you in to help them through this decision-making process. Now, I'm a consultant. The way I solve problems, usually, is I start by asking questions. Right? You don't charge for the questions, I charge for the answers. But what questions might you ask to help somebody who's stuck in a situation like this? For years and years and years and years, I have asked two fundamental questions of my clients who are stuck. What happens if you do the action that you're mm -hmm. contemplating? And what happens if you do not do the action you are contemplating? And these are actually really not bad questions. You can get a lot of information from a client if you explore these questions and the answers and all the paths that that will lead you to. Unfortunately, these questions only paint half a picture. And they've left me with a nagging feeling that I'm missing something. And I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. What was missing? And I recently discovered what the problem is. And I formulated that into what I call the Decision 360 Matrix. And what I've really done here is I've added two more questions. We start with the first question. The first two are the same. What will happen if you do this action? So let's go through our scenario with, the, <clears throat> with your client here. What will happen if you Swap out your crappy old technology with a brand new system that's written in modern technology. Well, what will happen is we will be able to respond and be much more responsive to the marketplace. We can now deliver our product on smart watches, which are going to be the cutting edge thing. And everybody's going to want to see our product on a Google Glass for sure. And the next great thing with the wearable. 
affordable shirts. I don't know if anybody told you this. Smart shirts are coming. We want our product to be able to be delivered or whatever. This is a question a lot of people ask. Next question, what will happen if you don't implement the new technology? Well, what will happen if you don't? Well, we're an amazingly profitable company. Our profits are really strong. We will continue to be the market leader for the next five years easily. We will rake in huge amounts of money, and all the executive team will, will receive obscene bonuses because we're hugely profitable. So that's what one of the things that will happen if we don't do this. One of the other things that will happen if we don't do this is we will be outrun and outmaneuvered by our upcoming market disrupting competitors that are right now just a little pinprick of a stock company, that they're going to beat the crap out of us in the market and eat our lunch. Now here's where it gets interesting. Here are the next two questions. What won't happen? What won't happen if we do what we're trying to do? What won't happen if we implement this new technology? This is where it starts to get a little interesting. is when our three senior developers who know the system inside and out retire next year, we won't have a panic attack and wind up collapsing our entire business because nobody knows how to run the system. So we won't be held hostage to our really crummy technology if we implement our new technology. A lot of these questions, this, this one in particular, a lot of times you can, if you ask this question, there are two things that happen. You will come up with positive attributes or answers, or we won't be held hostage to our technology. That to me is a benefit. But you also come up with negatives. If you really explore the question, what won't happen? Well, what won't happen is, you know, in the last five years, we've budgeted to do Project Flying Monkey which is a major corporate strategic initiative, and if we do this project and develop and devote all our resources, we won't have time to do project flying monkey, whatever that is. That is called the opportunity cost. In the world of finite resources, and finite money, and finite time, you often have to give something up to do something. So exploring what won't happen is the opportunity cost. You have to factor that in. And sometimes that can be daunting and it can be overwhelming. The next and last question is one really that's kind of hard to wrap your brain around. What won't happen if we don't do this? So it's sort of a double negative. What won't happen if we don't do this? Well, as I mentioned under one of the earlier ones, We've got a tiny pinprick of a competitor coming up who's about to run rings around us. And so if we don't do this, we won't be an ongoing concern because they're going to eat our lunch and they're going to drive us out of business because our costs are way too high. The other thing that won't happen is we decide not to do this. We won't spend every waking minute in our corporate life here arguing about whether we should or shouldn't do this. We can actually get on and, and implement Project Flying Monkey and move on and try to address our issues some other way. This question goes to the heart of the value of the opportunity. If you don't do something, what benefits do you lose by not doing the plan of action? It's hard to these questions, when you take them together, you don't have to ask them all at once. You have to actually ask them one at a time and explore all the options. It takes a little time, particularly these bottom two, these negative questions. People are just not wired to think that they just do not. And it takes a little while to let this percolate through the, particularly through your clients when they're in a corporate environment or management team. It takes a while to get that to bubble up. But you can learn a lot about what you're trying
trying to do? What it really entails, the cost of doing it, the cost of not doing it. What are the implications? To me, these four questions together actually paint a full picture of the issue at hand. And that's why I call it Precision 360.